I am so excited to bring to the stage Tara Clancy. At 20 years old, my mother had hardly been outside of Brooklyn. Uh, and when she did finally leave uh, a year later, uh, it was only because she married a cop from Queens, uh, which she then called the country. <laughs> <laughs> so that cop uh, was my father. But by the time I was two, they had divorced. Uh, and to make a little extra money afterwards, she decided to take on a weekend job cleaning apartments. Uh, and so the very first was this duplex with Manhattan skyline views filled with antiques and, and artwork. Uh, but as it wound up, uh, it would be her last. Because over the course of a year, she went from being the cleaning lady to the secretary to the girlfriend of the multimillionaire who owned it. Now, they never ended up living together uh, full time, but she and I would go on to spend every weekend with him and then every weekday back home in Queens, living this totally dual life uh, for the next 22 years. All right, so I'm to give you an idea of what this looks like. Uh, if it was a, a Wednesday after school, I would probably be, you know, playing handball with the rest of the kids from PS 133, right? But if it were a Friday after school, I would probably be getting into the back of the stretch limo he sent for me to go to his mansion uh, in the Hamptons. Uh, in fact, usually it would be me uh, and my best friend Esther. And when we jumped in with our, you know, high tops and quarter waters, you know, he'd be sitting in the way back uh, in a pinstripe suit reading the times. Now, he was actually uh, six foot ten. So, <laughs> uh, so even seated, his knees were as tall, you know, as we were, you know, and they would uh, rock in and out as we drove, uh, him reading and us playing. Uh, went to store, get a stick of butter, store a jazz brown, I was sitting in the butter, took a piece of glass, shoved it up his ass, never seen a motherfucker run so fast. <laughs> Oh, you know, we didn't always, of course, you know, travel uh, by stretch limo. You know, if, uh, if it was a, uh, a holiday weekend, you know, he anticipated bad traffic or whatever, uh, he would just charter a private plane. <laughs> right. And so it was then that, you know, we just became like, you know, super women, you know, able to jump social strata in a single bound. <laughs> My mother would, would drive us to the airport in her beat-up cutlass uh, while you know, like doing her mascara in the rear view and smoking a cigarette, you know? But then we would get there and like, you know, take a breath and sashay out on the <laughs> you know, Suddenly doing our best impression of anyone with an upbringing different than ours. <laughs> That the, uh, the truth is that the, the acting wasn't necessary. Uh, to his uh, credit, uh, he never asked us to change. Uh, in fact, uh, instead, uh, he started throwing an annual summer party uh, for my mom's entire Brooklyn Italian family. Okay, and there they would be, uh, all my uh, five aunts, five uncles, and 17 first cousins piling out of planes at East Hampton Airport. <laughs> of garlic here, into the nostrils of old wasps, you know, they like, drop dead over the spot with a southern urge for spaghetti. <laughs> anyway, pretty soon my, uh, you know, my, my Uncle Vinny and all six of his kids from Jersey would be, you know, lining up for plates of the French country picnic inspired fair, and my, uh, my Uncle Sal, who was a Vietnam vet and ran a dive bar uh, would be out playing croquet. <laughs> <laughs> he, he actually, uh, he got so good that at one point him and my mother's boyfriend uh, teamed up for a tournament in Central Park <laughs> and he was my tough ass uncle wearing all white and kicking old money ass. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, so, uh, during the week we were actually both of them, but come the weekend, you know, we were the Jeffersons. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, now, now the truth is, you know, it was it was probably as much fun, you know, for us being in his world as it was seeing him in our world. You know, like you know, there he would be at our, you know, Jets tailgate parties. You know, at 8 a.m. in a Burberry coat, uh, you know, drinking his Delamont cognac out of a plastic cup. You know, uh, or you know, at Christmas, you know, all 40 of us, you know, crammed into my grandmother's basement in Queens, and you know, all six foot ten of him wedged between my aunt Lucille and my uncle Tony on a fold-out chair eating a meatball. <laughs> Uh, and so this all went on uh, for 22 years, uh, and, and then it came to an end, uh, as relationships do. Uh, and sometime afterward, my mother wound up uh, marrying a guy who grew up around the corner from her in Brooklyn, uh, who is a mailman. Uh, and they are still married, uh, and I am very sure that not many people in their circle uh, know that she has, uh, you know, flown the, the Concord to London twice, you know? <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, I think probably all of it can be best summed up by this. Uh, I have a three-year-old son now, uh, and while my mother likes to play him, uh, you know, Vivaldi during dinner, uh, she has also bought him a tiny velour tracksuit. <laughs> 